Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a brand new 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Sport. And today, I'm gonna review it for you guys. Boy, that was a lot of tease. Before we begin, I want to thank Koch 33 Toyota for allowing me to review this vehicle. For all your Toyota needs, you can visit Koch 33 in Easton, Pennsylvania right off of Route 33 or at their website, Koch33Toyota.com. Starting out up front on the new Tundra, you'll have full LED headlights, incandescent turn signals on this particular trim, and these very cleverly integrated vents. Now these are actually functional on both sides by the headlights, and that allows for more air intake of course, in addition to the massive grill that this thing has. I've joked in the past how this looks like a large mouth bass, just like, Ugh! it has grown on me the more I see it, but I do kind of wish that this lower portion was body color. I think on certain trims it is, but for the most part, you're gonna get an entirely black front fascia here. Speaking of the front fascia here, you'll have LED fog lights, parking sensors, Tundra stamped into the bumper. Then you'll have your sensor for the Toyota Safety Sense. So that's your lane departure warning, your radar guided cruise control, stuff like that. Then you'll have a camera for the 360 degree camera system. And TRD is etched into the plastic a little bit higher on the grill up here. Very bold styling on the new Tundra, but I think for the most part it works. Moving underneath the hood in this Tundra, it is powered by a new twin turbo V6, making 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. That's paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission. There will be a more powerful iForce Max V6 coming out later in 2022. Moving to the profile of the new Tundra, starting here with the wheels and tires, you'll have 265 60R tires wrapped around these gorgeous gloss black TRD wheels. They're 20 inches. I think they look fantastic on this truck. I know there's been a lot of complaints about, oh, well, the wheels are too big on trucks nowadays, but this is the sport appearance package, so I can forgive them in that element. I think it looks particularly sleek. And this truck is colored in lunar rock. So that is a little bit different from cement gray. There is my truck over there. That's cement gray. Lunar rock might at first glance look identical, but what I like is there's kind of this little green hue to it. I don't really know if you can see it on camera, but it really pops with this kind of greenish glow. I think that looks great because currently we are in the car industry where we were in the early 2000s and late 90s when everything back then was either this awful beige color or forest green. And now in 2022, everything seems to be matte gray and you really got to make a unique looking matte gray to stand out from the competition and i think lunar rock really does that quite well with this little greenish hue speaking of the mirror cap i guess while we're here it's body color you'll have a camera down here for the 360 degree camera system you'll have turn signal indicators and blind spot monitoring incorporated into the mirrors they are also power folding, which is nice, and the doors do have keyless entry. That is uh, expected, I would hope, on a trim this high. So you just have to have the key in your pocket and the, you can unlock the door and lock the door without hitting the actual button. Moving over here, you'll have your SR5 badge, and you might be saying, wait a minute, Isaac, I thought this was a TRD Sport, and it is. Tundra does things a little bit differently than the Tacoma does. So on the Tundra, it goes, SR base model, SR5, then an SR5 with the TRD Sport package, SR5 with the TRD Off-Road, then you go up to Limited, Platinum, etc. On the Tacoma, it would just go SR5, TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, they're completely different trims, but on this, their package is incorporated into the SR5 model. So you'll still get that sticker, that badge rather, right there, and then you'll have a sticker on the back denoting which trim uh, package variation you have. So a little bit different there than on the Tacoma. And if we move to the back here, you'll see Tundra stamped into the tailgate, and then you'll have your 4x4 badge, body color bumper, and parking sensors, as well as your towing package incorporated into this. And then if we move up to the tailgate latch, you'll see it says Toyota right here. You'll have a backup camera and a light so if we drop this it is dampened you'll have a nice little puddle light 
So if you're working at night or something, you don't step in anything, a big mud puddle or anything like that. So that's nice. And then you have on this particular Tundra, they have put a spray on bed liner on top of the composite bed, which is never a bad idea. The composite bed is already very durable, but the spray on bed liner just makes it even more durable. And then you also have a Toyota tonneau cover. There's a tongue twister, speaking of tees. So you can pull that right there and then you can fold this down. There's another little latch. Fairly easy to do even with one hand here. And that gives us a little bit better access to the bed. You'll have LED lights, some tie down rails, some spots for actual tie downs. And then you do have an AC 120, whoops, AC 120 volt outlet right there. Always love to see that. Very impressed with how the Tundra has added more capability and functionality to the bed. Yes, it might not actually have all the bells and whistles and kind of gimmicks that the F-150 does or the Silverado, but I still think that they've added a good deal of functionality back here. My only complaint is that when we try to get up into the bed, there's no easy step. Now there is a little step you can get uh, as a dealer option that pops down right here, but it's not included on all the Tundras. And so that's a little disappointing because there's not really an easy way, like there's not a cutout on the corner here, the bumper to, to get up into the Tundra. And I've noticed a lot of people complain about that. And, I, and actually physically being here, I'm like, oh yeah, it is kind of like, that's a really high lift of your leg to get in. And then if you have the tailgate down, you're like, ah, what am I gonna do here? How am I gonna get in? So that is one complaint on the Tundra. Now I am young and spry, so I'm gonna get up, well, not as spry as I used to be apparently, but I am gonna get up here just to point out that there is two cameras back here. We'll touch upon that a little bit more when we get to the interior, but I did wanna note that, that they are incorporated into the third brake light. Before we move to the interior, I just wanted to highlight the key fob really quickly. In addition to lock, unlock, and panic, it's a pretty standard key fob for the most part, but you do have the ability to drop the tailgate from the key fob, so that's really nice. Just tap the button on there and it will come down automatically. You can also do that from the interior. Moving to the interior on the Tundra, one of the things I want to start by highlighting is this really nice leather wrapped armrest. I've talked extensively in my other videos about how truck guys rest their arms up here so they should make this part of the door comfortable. And Toyota does that. They know their market very, very nice, very comfortable to, to rest up here. There is, of course, an armrest down here as well if you prefer the traditional way. But I think a lot of truck guys put their arms up here. And like on my Tacoma, for example, you can't really do it. It kind of slopes down. It's not easy unless you have the window open. And so I really like that attention to detail. That is something I don't know if many other people are going to highlight. But I know for me, that is a cool addition and there's a driver's side grab handle. We're bringing it back, ladies and gentlemen. The new Toyota Tundra passes the Isaac's driver's side grab handle test on, and you get the driver's side, and there is a passenger one as well. Love that. I think more trucks should have driver's side grab handles, but unfortunately, they don't. Moving down here, you'll have your traditional window switches. You'll have lock, unlock, your door, um, your window lockers. Then you have your switches for your controls for the mirror to adjust them and then you also do have the button for power whoop i didn't turn it on let's turn it on really quick here and there you go you can power fold the mirrors in and then you can tap them to to fold them out so there is really nice functionality there and then down here <clears throat> let's get through all these buttons you have your bed lights automatic high beams auto engine start stop I think this is your lights, the brightness on the gauges up there in your center console. Your odometer trip, your rear parking sensors, uh, your light adjustment to adjust the height of the light, like which angle you kind of want them at. And then you'll have your heated steering wheel button and your bed AC 120 volt outlet button so you can turn it on and off so it's not constantly running and wasting the battery. Okay, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's what all the buttons do. I'll put something right here to confirm or deny that. And so moving up here, you have your volume controls on the steering wheel. Again, very nicely kind of leather wrapped steering wheel right here. I mean, it is leather wrapped, it's not kind of leather wrapped, it is. 
but you'll also have your lane departure warning, your radar guided cruise control buttons all incorporated into that. And then you sort of have a flat bottom right here, which is really cool. Now, if we go to turn on the Tundra, the TRD Sport has this red TRD button. I really like the gauge cluster startup. You get that cool orange hue, it says Tundra. And you'll have a small gauge cluster screen right here. Pretty much tells you everything you need to know on the truck. There is of course a larger option. Then you have two traditional gauges right here for your tack and your speedometer, and it gives you all your other traditional readouts on here. The small screen is controlled by the steering wheel buttons as per usual, and you know, standard digital speedometer, average fuel economy, which is apparently not very good, but this is a brand new truck, so uh, we can forgive that. It hasn't really been out on the road, if I'm not mistaken. Now. If we move over here to the absolutely massive infotainment system screen, I mean, it is so cool. My, my one downside is it is very confusing to just use. Like I, if I don't wanna set up an account, you have to jump some hoops to get to this screen. Now it's not actually flickering. I don't know if I can get it to not do that. Um, it's not actually flickering. That would be super annoying and really dangerous because that would distract the driver. That's just the refresh rate of my camera compared to the refresh rate of this screen. So I don't know if we can get it to an angle that it's not doing that, but I promise you it does not flicker like that. There you go, see? It doesn't actually flicker like that in real life. But you'll have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto incorporated into this, uh, pretty standard stuff. Navigation, of course, and Bluetooth as well. Very spiffy screen, very quick um, between different clicks and stuff. This is a huge upgrade from Toyota's last system, which honestly was pretty laggy. And so it's cool to see that they've really upgraded this system quite well and they've paid attention to that. And then down here, you'll have a traditional volume control, which I love. Always love to have the, the big meaty volume control, even though for the most part, I actually, whoop, I actually change the volume on the steering wheel. I use those controls. I, I always appreciate having a dial as an option. You'll have your climate controls right here, heated seats as well. It's dual zone in the TRD Sport, which is nice to see. And you do have a digital readout little screen right here. And these just really cool firm buttons. They really feel solid, like you're not gonna um, break them by, by pushing on them. Um, and they're probably very easy to use with gloves on. So if you're using this truck for work, you can definitely do that. Down here, you'll have your trailering assist, your traction control off, your hazards, and your camera view. If we click this camera view button right here, it's gonna give us a 360 degree surround view of the truck, which I think is really neat. And then you can pause it wherever you'd like and unpause it, kind of give you a better idea, especially when you're parking, of, of what your surroundings look like. Now, if we switch this thing into reverse really quick, we also have a top-down 360-degree camera, which is really good as well. And, oh man, you're really just gonna fight me on this screen thing. There we go, it's a little bit better. No! Anyway, you'll have a main backup camera right here. You can turn the wheel, and that's gonna turn the lines on the screen. And then moving back and forth, it'll actually, like, like if I put this into reverse right here and we back up a little bit, you can see the uh, screen does move on the top view right there. And then you do have a bunch of different uh, camera angles that you can get to from here. You do have a bed camera. That was one of the cameras that I mentioned at the top right there. Always cool to see a bed camera. So if you don't have a Tanu on and you want to just see what you have in the bed, you have the ability to do that very simply from the cab. You don't have to look back. Um, so I really like that feature. The other camera that was at the top there that I'd like to touch upon really quick is right here. So it's the traditional mirror that you can switch between a regular mirror, ooh, here I am, and then a rear view camera. So if you have people in the back seat, let's say for example, they're taking up your view, like my hand is, look at how distracting that is. You can just flick that and it's gonna give you the camera view for easier visibility out of the rear. Love this. It's crazy to me that I've been reviewing cars for so long that I think when I started, one of the only vehicles to have this was maybe the GMC Sierra and like a Land Rover Defender. And now this is becoming much more widely adopted in the 
uh, truck world and in most SUVs and sedans. So I'm loving this as a feature. I think it's fantastic. So um, really, really appreciate that. Uh, as a functionality. Another thing I really appreciate, which only Tundra does and makes them a, a cut above the rest in my opinion, is if we go up here, you can see there is a there is a rear window button, but you're like, wait, Isaac, there's no rear window. Oh yes, there is. The entire thing folds down, which is amazing. I love that. You just pull that up and the entire thing comes up. Now, most vehicles like the Tacoma behind us, as we can see right there, has a small center rear window that will fold out, which I love. I love it on my Tacoma. I think it's great. I mean, my trucks, I love my truck, you know, but the ability to actually lower the entire full window. Oh my, unmatched. I think it's fantastic. Absolutely love that feature. It might be my favorite feature in the truck industry and it's so simple and it's been on Toyota Tundras for years. Over here, you'll have a TRD shifter, and then you'll have your electronic parking brake right there. Tons of storage right here, cup holders, and then you can actually open up this little cubby to access USB and USB-C and more storage, or you can lift the entire thing up to have easier access to that as well. Then you'll have your two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive settings right here, and your different drive modes. So you can choose between, oh, let's get in there, sport, normal, and eco, it looks like, on this guy. Um, so you can choose between different different modes, which is always a, a good usage, I think. It's always nice to have an eco mode, especially on a truck this big. You definitely want something that's going to hopefully save you a little tiny bit of fuel economy when you drive it. So always good to see. And then the last thing I wanted to touch upon uh, is, well, actually a couple more things. So we have some storage right there and it says Tundra stamped in there. You have your glove box down there. And I just really love these seats. This is the last thing I wanted to talk about. Love these seats, power adjusting. I love the texture. They're very comfortable, much more comfortable in my opinion than the previous Tundra. So I think they've really upgraded in that capacity. Moving to the back really quick, you can pull this. I'm gonna see if I can do this with one hand. And then, yes, I can. You can lift this up for some under the seat storage. Always love to see that. And then you do have the ability to lay this flat unfortunately oh i actually might be able to do it yeah this goes a little bit more flush not completely flat but you do have the ability to lay stuff against the back seats if you'd like as well so dual options for storage back here and i'd hope so because it's absolutely massive back here so much leg room so much headroom definitely limousine quality leg room and headroom back here. And it is equally as comfortable back here as it is up front with the leather seats. You'll have a household outlet, some climate vents. I don't know why I struggled to say that. Climate vents, some storage and cup holders. And then you'll also have even more cup holders in case you wanted two bottles of water here and two bottles of water right there or perhaps a dr pepper all right guys that's gonna wrap up my review of this 2022 toyota tundra trd sport unfortunately i cannot drive this particular truck because it was pre-sold already but graciously Koch allowed me to review the interior and do a walk around for you guys so i hope this video really helped Fear not though, because I do have driving impressions on the new Tundra. I'll link that above, uh, maybe like right there and below. So if you're interested in knowing how I, f how I feel the new Tundra drives, uh, you can go watch that video. Spoiler alert, I think it drives quite well. And lastly, I'd like to close with some scripture. So I'd like to read Psalm 69, 29 through 31. I always like to close with some scripture uh, in the hopes that I can point you towards reading the Bible or a relationship with Jesus because he does want a relationship with you guys. And I figure he's blessed me with this opportunity to be able to review cars. So why not use it as an opportunity to hopefully point you guys towards him? So this particular section is talking about um, going through the ringer, essentially is a modern terminology for it. Verse 29. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your salvation, O God, set me on high. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox or bull with horns and hooves. So 
basically the author, King David right here, is talking about praising God even when we're going through it. Now, a lot of the time we could be mad at God for whatever we're going through. We say, why would you do this? Why would you allow this? Or we could praise him and try to uh, strengthen our relationship with God. And I've found in my life, and I think many of you have too, that when you go through a difficult situation with somebody you love or somebody you know, it's a lot easier and it grows your relationship. And it's the same thing with God, that when you praise him in the storm, proverbial storm, he, you're actually going to get closer to him and you're you're not going to get as far as you might that if you hold animosity towards him for or blame him for whatever's going on in your life. So I would encourage you guys to read scripture, especially from the Psalms. Um, and that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.